What's up you guys, Josh Tongley here. Today I want to talk about how to manifest exactly what you want and why you sometimes get exactly what you don't want as well. And this is still part of a series I'm doing based on the book by Vadim Zeeland called Reality Transurfing. Because once you become more aware of the amount of energy that's needed in your desires, and by the end of this you'll be able to manifest whatever it is you want effortlessly. You see, the problem is that a lot of people believe that you gotta want something badly in order to manifest it. Right? I mean, I've even heard motivational speakers use that kind of language where they say things like, you got to be desperate and be obsessed with your dreams and your goals if you want to reach them. And look, I don't deny that they eventually manifested what they wanted. But the question is, did their desperation and strong desire help them or did it hurt them along the way? Vadim Zeeland mentions a phrase that you might have heard growing up if you were scolded by someone where they say, I want never gets. I want never gets. And he rephrases it slightly in order to explain something that I think you're going to want to remember from this point on that goes like this. The stronger you want something, the less likely you are to get it. Let me say that again. The stronger you want something, the less likely you are to get it. You might be confused hearing that wondering like, why? Isn't that how you're supposed to quote unquote attract things? Or doesn't that show that you have a strong faith? Nope. In fact, it's a complete opposite. Let me explain. In my recent videos, which I suggest for you to watch in case you haven't yet, I talked a lot about how everything in life strives towards balance. You know what I'm saying? Everything in nature. For instance, when you find yourself in balance and in harmony with the world around you, what do you notice? Life runs a lot more smoothly and effortlessly, right? But then what happens when you're not in balance and in harmony with the world around you? Here's what happens, and I'm sure some of you listening can confirm this too. But life becomes a battle with balancing forces. And just in case you did miss my previous videos, I'll break it down again so the rest of what I'm going to say will make more sense. You see, although we live in a material world, we can't forget that everything has an energetic foundation where everything that occurs on an invisible level, listen, is reflected in the visible material world. Still with me? That being said, Zeeland also talks about something called excess potential. Now what the heck is that? Excess potential is something that's created whenever there's too much importance, too much meaning and value given to something, like to a particular object or an event. And wherever there's excess potential of any form, he says, balance forces come into play to correct the imbalance and restore equilibrium. Okay, back to what I was saying earlier. When you want something badly, where you're willing to freaking put everything on the line to get it, think of it as like placing everything on one side of a scale then what you're doing is you're creating huge excess potential, which then destroys what? Balance. It destroys balance. And whenever there's imbalance, and keep in mind, nature strives for balance, then what's the natural effect again? Balance forces, he says, will throw you onto a lifeline where there's no trace of the object you desire. And what are lifelines again? Think of a lifeline as scripts, as sets of scenery that are more or less uniform in quality. You see, although all possible events exist, including your desires. You shift to certain lifelines and get the things that correspond to your thought energy. So if you're obsessed with your desires, Zeeland says, it's like a wild boar trying to catch a bluebird. The boar wants the bird badly, right? Licking its lips and sorting out loud and rooting the ground in anticipation. But then naturally, the bird flies away. See, if the boar just wandered around somewhere nearby, not giving a rip about the bird, but just being indifferent, Believe it or not, it would have had a better chance at catching the bird. And here's why. Ready? According to Zeeland, there are three types of desire. The first type of desire is when a strong desire, listen closely, transforms into the determined intention to have something and does whatever is required to get it. And when that happens, then the desire is fulfilled. But you might say, Josh, if it's a strong desire, I thought that creates excess potential. And the answer is, and here's a game changer. The potential created by the desire is dispersed. How? Because the energy behind it is fueled into action. Okay, the second type of desire, Vadim says, is a desire that's inactive. It's tormenting. And it represents excess potential in its purest form because it just lingers in the energy field. And in a best case scenario, it simply wastes your energy. And in a worst case scenario, it attracts all kinds of unrelated problems. Now, the third kind of desire, he says, is the most insidious of them all. It's when your desire becomes dependent on the object of the desire. Examples being when you say things like, if such and such doesn't happen, then I'm screwed. 
Or if I don't get this, nothing else matters. Or if I achieve this, my situation will improve dramatically. Or if I don't achieve this, my life will lose all meaning. Or if I do this, I'll prove to myself and everybody else what I'm worth. Or if I don't do this, I'm worth nothing. And so on. But you see, it? it's a desire that becomes a dependent relationship, you guys, which ain't good. Now let's be real here, okay? Whether you acknowledge it or not. According to Zeelin, when your desire has become so dependent, like a kind of psychosis, where you're willing to do whatever the heck it takes to get something, then somewhere deep down inside, folks, you don't really believe you can achieve it. And what this does is that it creates a strong interference in the thought energy you're transmitting. And so you're going to end up trying really, really hard convincing yourself that you can achieve it, right? Which then boosts the level of excess potential even more. And shoot, with that kind of dynamic, it'll probably take you forever to achieve your goal because it'll keep getting further and further away from you to the point where you'll get so burnt out from the constant struggle and most likely drop the desire because your efforts seem to lead to nothing, which is sad. That's why you want to stick with the first type of desire, where your desire is transformed into pure intention, free of excess potential. Okay, but what about the common belief that there's no such thing as a free lunch and that everything has to be paid for? Heard that? Well, Zeeland responds to it and says that in truth, we only pay for the excess potential we create because in the alternative space, aka the infinite field, which contains all the alternatives of all possible events. In this field, get this, everything's free. So a way you can look at it, you can say that the absence of importance and dependent relationships are a kind of payment for the fulfillment of desire. That's why the energy of pure intention, pure intention being desire and action without the attribution of importance, he says, is all that's required for you to transfer to a lifeline where the object of desire becomes a part of your reality. I mean, think about it. You exercise pure intention every day, like walking to the mailbox to get your letters or getting a drink from the fridge or going to the supermarket to buy your daily food to eat. That's pure intention, folks, where you're not bottling up a bunch of emotions, placing any importance on those things, which is why it flows so smoothly. But then for some reason, when you have a quote unquote big goal, all of a sudden you shift so much energy to one side of the scale. And then to your surprise, balanced forces take it from you. Now from now on, you guys, exercise pure intention towards your quote-unquote big goal and lower the stakes. Another way to look at this is that the more you want to avoid something, he says, the greater the probability that you'll experience it. It's like this. Balanced forces simply have two alternatives, either to draw you away from encountering the thing you want to avoid or to bring you into contact with it. In other words, if you keep radiating the energy of avoidance where you're actively desiring for something not to happen, guess what? Zealand says that you always get the things that you love to hate. And I can totally relate to this too. For instance, it's like when I bought my very first car. See, when I first got my license, I was driving an old 1989 Honda Accord. And it was my parents' car. It was a good car, but it wasn't mine. And thankfully, the whole time, dude, I had no accidents, no dents, nothing. And once I finally saved up some cash, I eventually bought my very first brand new car. And it was a big deal for me at the time. And honestly, I treated the car like it was my baby. I always kept it clean. It was souped up like a typical rice rocket. You know what I'm saying? Some of you will know that term. Let's just say I placed huge value on it, okay? Where I always made sure that there were no dents, no scratches, none of that. I just wanted it to look perfect. In other words, without realizing it at the time, a lot of excess potential was created. Check this out. In just a short period of time, even when I was trying to be super careful with it, the windshield cracked while I was on the freeway from these rocks I shot out from the wheels of a big rig. What are the chances of that? Another time my car literally slid off a snowy road and landed on a tree stump. A tree stump. No joke. Which ended up smashing my front bumper and other unexpected stuff as well. And when all those things happened, I was like, dude, all those years driving my parents' old car where I was kind of like, whatever, just neutral. None of that stuff ever happened, ever. And what's also interesting is that once I stopped placing so much importance on my new car because of the damage it already took, believe it or not, no more problems other than the typical maintenance you do on a car. So if you're like me of how I was back in the day, placing so much importance on a material object, whether it be with your car, your bike, your home, whatever, the solution, Vadim says, is to level out your attitude towards it. Treat it like the ordinary object that it is. Seriously, that doesn't mean being careless about it. It means don't idolize it, plain and simple. And then the chances of it being damaged will be greatly reduced, for real. All right, real talk now. 
I want you to think about the problems and the challenges you're facing at this time, whether it be with money, your health, relationships, whatever it is. I want you to think back for a moment and try to see where you might have attributed excessive importance to it. And trust me, I get it. You mean well, but don't forget, having a strong desire to either get or avoid something is always going to screw you over. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing you can do for now regarding your desire is to reduce the level of importance you're giving to it. Straight up, it'll make a difference. Then once you do that, start transmitting positive energy right away. Start focusing on the good stuff, like showing gratitude, counting your blessings, etc. And if things seem really bad to you at the moment, well then, take heart. Because based on the law of balance, things can't stay bad forever, folks. They can't. Balance forces will eventually compensate the bad with good, right? And since all possible events exist right now, including your desires, all you got to do is simply choose it. No need to force anything. You don't got to be all super intense about it. Now, nah, dude, just play it cool. Relax and then move towards your goal. In the same manner, Zeeland says, as you would if you were to go to the shop to buy a newspaper. That's it. And with the power of pure intention, you'll shift to a lifeline that corresponds to your thought energy and you'll get the very thing that you want because you get what you believe. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, in case you haven't heard, I'll be doing a live coaching and Q&A session soon. Yep, I'll be answering your questions. And so if you're interested in that, just click the join button below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like and share it. Or if you're listening via podcast, I'd really appreciate a review. It gets more people to discover my work and of course help spread this message. And I'd love to hear your experiences or questions in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified of my next video. I pump these out every single week so you don't want to miss them. And don't forget to register for my free online training where I dive deeper into how you can start manifesting the life you really want right now. So check it out. Link's in the description. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.